Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and with me today is... Caleb with Olympus Reptiles. Hey there, you're getting so much better. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to share with you some of the animals that we think make... Well, hi buddy. We make good first-time reptiles. Good good starter reptiles, you want to say, or beginner reptiles. We're also going to talk about that term and why we kind of don't like it, uh, but still give you some ideas. First and foremost, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to remember to do that. And slide over to the Patreon, we're going to tell you about the one exception where there actually is a reason to stick with certain animals for your first. There is an exception to it. These aren't it. We'll tell you some of the reasons why. Caleb's got some really strong opinions on this. So, uh, shall we start? Yeah. So what would be, well, let's start with this in my hand. What would you call this? Don't say a snake. Don't ever, don't do that, Kurt. I'm just stopping Kurt before he says it's a snake. If y'all know Kurt, that's a sense of humor. Like, it was, he, he's laughing because it was about to come out of his fucking mouth, man. I know. I know. Obviously, this is a ball python. Yeah. This is a super Mojave, so it's mm -hmm. a, a bell complex with that gray head. You almost get that yellow streak. Really cool snake. I like these guys a lot, don't I? Um, I actually like the more white bells better, but this is for a specific project, why we made this and kept her back. But would you consider this to be a beginner animal? Mm -hmm. Okay, explain. Explain why. So, the, the reasoning a lot of people say one thing is a good beginner or not is typically the ease of care. Something that even if you mess something up, you can't mess, you really can't mess it up bad enough that you kill it, at, like you have less chances, right? You can really mess anything up and kill anything, but there's less likely to on their quote unquote beginner species. Fall pythons are a really hardy animal, which is crazy because if you go back to the 1980s, oh, shit. they were considered an expert level species. My, how the times have changed because anyone can really just pick up a you know a good example actually is a lot of people buy their cages are recommended to buy the cage and get it set up before the animal ball pythons are one that i think you can buy the animal and the cage in the same day set it up go home and then be good i agree um so i, I mean in Crestica, as you saw in a video probably last week or however this video schedule works we set this thing up same day yep. it's fine um so ball pythons Minimal care. Yeah. By minimal, I don't mean you don't have to do anything. Minimal, I mean you don't need special lights. Mm -hmm. They don't need special calcium or D3 or multivitamins. They don't need special lighting. They do need special heat, but that's really not that hard to do for them. Yep, that's pretty um, normal. Space requirements aren't huge. Space requirements aren't huge. They don't get 20 foot long. They, they're they really just easy. I mean, right. there's something that even of babies, you could buy a... Uh, not that I recommend it. Before like, everyone goes to the comments and say, oh, God, look what Caleb recommends. You could, honest to God, probably buy a hatchling straight out of the egg mm -hmm. with minimal knowledge and do just fine. Yeah, I don't recommend it. But yeah. I don't recommend yeah. it, but that, there's something that you could you just can. No, a couple things on these, and I agree. They're, they're definitely a snake that I think is a great first reptile. But when you get into snakes, and even lizards to a, a lesser extent, you know, but when you talk about pythons or boas or whatever we're going to talk about, a couple things that also make it beyond the care is a personality, right? These things they call ball pythons, they roll in a ball. They're not bitey by nature, typically. Are you going to get bit? Eventually, it's going to happen, right? Uh, but it's not bad, so they're really easy on that. They're really easy to handle and the size. You mentioned the size. The size is going to stay at, at an ideal size. Not too small, not too big. This is a Goldilocks animal. More than I think it's truly an easy animal, I just think it's a Goldilocks. What I mean by Goldilocks is just those things. It's easy to handle, not too flighty, not too bitey. The size is just right, not too big, not too small, it's just right. All those things kind of check off on those boxes. The look is whatever the hell you want it to be, it's limitless. So they get kind of lumped into that starter animal, in my opinion. Um, even though truly, I think this is not the easiest for a snake probably yeah. the best for a snake and the most common. The only thing these are going to give you trouble with that one of the other ones we're going to talk about won't is ball pythons are notorious for occasional mafia issues. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think the more you have, the more likely you're going to have that. Some, some pheromones, if you have one or two, you're probably not going to run that very often. If you do, it's most likely your cage. So it's a few setups you got to change, make sure your humidity is on point. But they can be very frustrating at feed time, especially for a new keeper who expects that snake to eat every week like clockwork and all of a sudden it shuts off for a month they think oh my god my snake's gonna die it's not just check your humidity check your heat make sure it's on point it's gonna be fine uh most likely but that's about the only thing on them that i think 
puts them a little bit not beyond starter, mm -hmm. but you got to be prepared for it when you get one. Yeah. Yeah. What's another good snake you think that definitely is a starter snake? See if we're on the same page. Should be. We talked about it off camera. Corn snakes. Corn snakes. We are. Yeah. And we even said pretty much any almost clue. any clue. Yeah. yeah. Except for you that got one. king snakes. You yeah. got milk snakes. You know, honestly, probably king snakes and milk snakes are better than corn snakes in my opinion. One, because they literally eat anything. They are considered a garbage disposal. Corn yeah. snake breeders will buy them just so they have something or if, a, if nothing goes to waste, right? Like, everyone has, I don't want to say everyone because we don't have one, but a lot of people have them for their garbage disposal. So well, they, they don't have food issues. Our garbage disposal does this. Yeah. We have a garbage disposal, just a different kind. So, you know, any colubrid except for, you know, a select few. <laughs> the boom slang. Boom we slang being about. one of them. Yes, don't get a boom slang. Unless you want to bleed say, out of every yeah, orifice say you Say Olympus have. said any colubrid's good. No, fuck that. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any colubrid. There's not mm -hmm. really some that are bad. I mean, they're all, you know, I mean, your, your rats, kings, the same species pretty much, right? Yeah. And your corns, they're all honestly native to here. So you don't have to do a whole lot, all right? I mean, if you're matching what's going on out there, don't freeze them. They would be in a burrow. <laughs> but if, if, you're, yeah. if you're matching a good, you know, mild summer day out there, mm -hmm. their snake's going to be perfect, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, it's I know hard. several people who keep them outside except for in the winter. They just bring them in. Like, you know, yeah. make sure you got a strong cage for that, but yeah. Yeah, we, we could actually do that. Unlike, you know, usually you get to be a Florida to do that, but with corns and kings, you could do that here, mm -hmm. so... The, uh, the only knock on some of them is when we start talking about all colubrids, you get in a wide range of sizes. I've seen some big, big rats and kings. Yeah. Corn's not so much. When I say big, they're not going to be heavy. They're going to be long. And they do tend to be a little more flighty than these guys. They like to move a little bit. But they're not too big for anybody to handle at all, I wouldn't think. I think you're more likely to get bit by one of them or one of these. Um... I don't know, because I, I really think it's circumstantial. Brooks King. I mean, Brooks Kings are bad, but you know, <laughs> How about you? you've got other things that yeah. aren't. And, man, we have some really nasty ball pythons. We do have a few. So. We do have a few. I, I mean, I think, you know, your corns are very less like, or not very likely to bite, typically. <laughs> you know, certain species of kings have a reputation, the Brooks being one. Uh, but all in all, Kluber's great starter animal. Yeah. It's great, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want snakes, let me introduce you to this gal here. We just set up on the last video. And that's I what kind of made us do this, was we talked about beginner animals. And the crested gecko, to me, man, they are almost like the Goldilocks too, right? This is, in my, my belief, this is the closest thing to ball pythons on the lizard side. The size for a lizard's great. You know, it's big enough to feel like you're holding something, but not teeny tiny. This one's still got some growing to do. You know, and you also have the New Caledonians and things like that. Or I guess this is New Caledonia. I'm talking about the, uh, what's the big one? Uh, leeches. Leeches, thank you. They're price prohibitive, but they won't always be price prohibitive. No, they're actually come down quite a bit yeah. lately, too. And they'll still continue to drop as they're more common. Yeah. But uh, care, so simple, right? Powdered foods, uh, or you can use some bugs, but you don't even have to use bugs at all. Uh, they got a really cool look to them. They're cute. As you can see, they're not bitey. They are kind of jumpy. You know, uh, easy to keep. No heat requirements. No light requirements. And you can put a display light on there. But if you do run a display light, don't run it on 24-7. You're going to want that thing to cycle on and off. Because uh, they do like the night. That's why they have the big old eyes. So, a really cool, really simple, fun to watch. Uh, you know. And they're sexually dimorphic. So, if you're getting into breeding, there's something there. It's really easy to tell the difference. Yeah. I mean, and it's just, they're a cool species. They were actually thought to be extinct. This is a species that thought to only exist in the pet trade for a while. Now, we've since found that's not the case. They are still in the wild. But, uh, we accidentally found out they were still in the wild. Yeah. So. There's a research wa researcher walking through on an island, and it fell on his head. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, so Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton discovered they're still around. <laughs> like, you know. But uh, really, really cool. I mean, so these are definitely right up there. I mean, I don't, I think they're perfect. If I was going to be a lizard breeder and just breed lizards, this is probably the species I would choose. To me, this is a most ball python like lizard there is. Yeah. Wouldn't absolutely. you, you think? Yeah. You can see any problems with these, anything you got to watch out for. You got more experience than I do. Just, you know, something we talked about in the last video, if I'm sure that comes out first, but may not. If, if it doesn't, then something you got to watch out for is their tails drop. Um, like we talked about, 
them dropping their tail is not that big of a deal. It doesn't store fat. Its main thing is it's a defense against predators. Well, they're in captivity, so they should not have predators. Um, it doesn't grow back, which can kind of be a pain for people who want what they what you would consider a perfect grade on crested geckos. But there's also a cult following for what they call frog butts, which are tailless crested geckos. But really, I have no preference. As long as they're healthy, thriving, and moving around, I don't, I don't care what they, if they have a tail or not. Now, one thing I want to point out on this guy, because I just not thought about it, is if you look at the back leg specifically, Kurt, you're going to see that there's a skin flap, you know, where the knee is. That it's really wide. And uh, so there's a lot of skin there. And I'm going to guess that adaptation is because they like to jump, and they will jump out of stuff and fall quite a bit. It's probably a cushion, yeah. Well, that's a cushion as they spread out. Right, like it's almost flying like flying geckos. Yeah, it's like a flying gecko where it's just going to help us. if I remember correctly, down. flying geckos are from New Caledonia. So, yeah, so it's just... The more surface area, the more stable and slower we can slow our descent and keep mm -hmm. from splatting. So it's pretty awesome. I know these guys are badass. They're just cute. Uh, another one. This is one of Kurt's first reptiles, and one of the first reptiles I had as a little kid. My first reptile is actually an anole. Do not get an anole for your first pet because they're mostly wild caught or uh, captive hatched. Not they're not really captive bred very often. Uh, most of them are going to be nuts, and most people buy them for food. So that tells you the conditions are coming in. Uh, mine lasted quite a while, but he was an ass the entire time. And that's par for the course of those things. But leopard geckos. One of my second reptiles was a leopard gecko. One of Kurt's first reptiles, or his first one, was a leopard gecko. Another animal that, man, there's a really low requirements for those things. So if you're like, I don't want a tree climbing thing, I'd really want something more on the ground. Leopard gecko, right? Mm -hmm. So what are your requirements going to be? You're set up a leopard gecko for somebody, what are we putting in there for? Um... You know, for a tent in a ten gallon aquarium, which is what I recommend for. Let's, we're just gonna say this is a hatchling because hatchling in adult care is slightly different. Hatchling, I'm putting uh, just for broad. I'm putting carpet in there instead of sand. They can be kept on sand. Impactions mostly come from lack of heat, but if we're talking about this is a new reptile person. Carpet. Chances are heat's gonna get messed up somewhere. Carpet's the way to go just to prevent something from happening. Um, and then. Just a water dish, food dish, hide, and some decor. Um, and then I like keeping a, because they do in the wild eat their dirt to get their calcium. I will keep a dish full of calcium powder in there at all times. Nice. You don't have to do that. It's not a requirement. I just do that because if they're lacking it or, I for, you know, we have a lot of animals. If we had a leopard gecko, I'm sure there's a day or two where I'll forget to put the calcium powder on the crickets. It just covers your basis. And they're not going to get too much of that. No, no. So really, and that's really about it. Uh, water dish, food dish, hide, some decoration for them to crawl around or scratch on. And Do need some heat though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd want, I prefer heat mats because um, they, at night, you know, you're trying to mimic the wild as much as possible. Crested geckos are what's called crepuscular. means they come out at dawn and dusk. Um, so they're not coming out in the daylight and basking in the midday. They're coming out as the sun's going down. And so they're finding rocks that are hot from the, that soaked up all the sun. They're going to lay on them all day and get there all night, get their belly heat. So that's why I prefer doing a uh, heat pad because that's what they would naturally be looking for. They're not looking for a sunlight. They're looking for a heat source. What about that old fashioned plug in hot rock? Do not get those. Those are crap. Oh, okay. Those are only good for one thing. And that's if you cut the wire and use it as a decoration. I have done that before because they do actually look kind of nice. Now, I don't recommend them at all. I'm going to tell you not to use them, but I'm not going to tell you to go crap on other YouTubers because there are YouTubers who still use them to this day and swear by them. They use them very effectively. I've not had issues. Don't go to their comment section and say, Matt and Caleb said you can't do this. You're a piece of crap for using it. I'm not saying they are. It's just they don't work. I'm going to bet most of those guys are over 50. You would be right. Yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> but uh, I would use a heat pad underneath with a... With a probe and, and thermostat just to keep things from spiking too hot. Um, what I have actually done in the past before I really enjoyed is I would during the day I would turn a heat lamp on on a certain spot and make sure I heat that to a certain temp and then at night I would turn it off so they could it would be like a natural thing. But you don't have to do that. Just use a heat pad. It saves you time and energy. You don't need a UV light or anything like that because again they're crepuscular. They come out at dawn and dusk. They don't really need those UVs. Is it okay to have? It's not going to hurt them. They could benefit from it. I don't really know. I haven't looked at the studies on that. There probably is a study saying they do benefit from that. But 
It's not a requirement. It's not, uh, and not a requirement where they're not thriving, right? I'm not saying that they don't thrive without it. They'll thrive with or without it. Yeah. And the thing, too, guys, I say most of those guys over 50, it's just because I'm in my mid-40s, and I know when I was first coming up and as a kid getting reptiles, the hot rock was the, uh, the thing. That's what we all had. We all had the old hot rock, right? And so those guys who are 10 years older than me, well, as they were getting into it for like a thing, not just as a kid, the hot rock was king and they're just, they're used to it. It's what they, they know. So that's why I made that comment. I ain't ripping old people. I am an old person. Uh, not quite ready for social service yet or whatever the fuck they call it, social security if I'm getting there. Uh, one more animal we're going to cover, and this one is another one that I think, so cover a couple snakes, cover a couple lizards, that I think makes a great starter pet. I guess this will be the third lizard. But it also has kind of an asterisk. That's a bearded dragon. Mm -hmm. So for me, I look at bearded dragons, and I say, man, these things, are they are bug eaters. Mm -hmm. They can eat some commercial pellets, but yeah. most of them are going to need some bug in their diet. Yeah. You know, uh, so with the leopard gecko, for the record. Yeah. There's some commercial leopard gecko food, I think, but most of them just eat the bugs. Yeah. So you're going to have to do some bugs. Uh, some people don't like that, unlike these cresteds, which is a powder food. So that's one advantage here. Number two is... Uh, they have quite a bit of requirements. You know, like they are going to need a very high UVB. And they are going to need a very warm basking spot. You're going to yeah. run on them about 95 degrees at the basking spot. And it's best to have that heat from the top. And it's best that heat on the top to be on something that's slanted. Not this, not on the ground, like this. And they'll kind of adjust their position to control their heat up and down that. You know, but they need that high heat. They need that high UVB. So you have a lot more equipment you have to keep up with and make sure it's running. And, you know, you've got to write down when you put that UVB bulb in. Because even though the bulb's working, the coating isn't, it needs to be changed every year or so. So there's just a little more work in there than you do with these guys that don't have that requirement. But that being said... A bearded dragon that's well started is a hardy some bitch. It is. I mean, that's the nice thing about them, right? It is, and there's something that is, you know, kind of like you talked about the crested gecko. That's not something that's so big you have to be scared of it. No. But it's not so small that it's fragile. No, it's they're like, in that Goldilocks. They're in that Goldilocks. Too. You know, they get a good size. So like a, a big bearded dragon is impressive to most people. Yes. You know, and even to people like, you know, I've seen. All kinds of really big lizards and i'm still seeing a big bearded healthy bearded dragon is it's amazing it's mesmerizing because they're just you yeah. know they're dragons and so yep. you know it's something that you can if you want a biggish lizard but you don't want to go big or go home and get like a water monitor yes which is going to need a whole house as a cage basically you can get a bearded dragon and get something that still gets big you know there was lines of the german giant bearded dragons way back in the early 2000s you'd easily get over two foot that was a huge bearded dragon. We're huge bearded dragons. But, you know, then Greek got involved and people were breeding everything that was big and calling it a German giant. And the bloodline got... Watered down. Watered down. And now there's... If someone is selling you a true German giant, they are robbing you or trying to rob you blind. Yeah. And you'll be able to asterisk C Volta Ball Python in about 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing, right? Yeah. Um, so with that, you know, yeah, bearded dragons. And the other thing, too, is if you don't know reptiles... And you see a good-sized bearded dragon, they almost look intimidating. Right? Yeah. They're spiky, they're rough, they got yeah. that black beard. Their name comes from when they spread it out. Their spines all over these fucking things. Man, they look like that thing's going to fuck some shit up. But the truth is, they don't. They're super gentle for the most part. Really yeah. low chances of biting. They're not yeah. very bitey. Yeah. They're one that likes to chill on your shoulder and just enjoy that just sun coming there. in. They'll hang out. You know, so they're really good. They kind of fit in that gold egg, which kind of screws lizards over a little bit. Because snakes, you really only have one that's truly that Goldilocks. Length, girth, everything. When you get into lizards, you got a couple that fit in there. you got the bearded dragon. you got the crusty. You could even argue the leopard gecko fits in that Goldilocks size. Mm -hmm. So you've got some options, which I think prevents any one of those. And every, all three of those have seen their day in the market. Mm -hmm. And it kind of ebbs and flows between them, and they'll all see it again. That's mm -hmm. Uh, kind of a cool thing with those. What are a couple species, really quick, because I know this video's getting long, that we definitely would say probably should not start with for beginners. I, I'll go first on snakes. Man, I'm going to give you all venomous. If it's your first snake, don't go get a fucking venomous, okay? I, I am all for people keeping hots. I am one of the biggest proponents that if you want to keep hots, by God, you should keep hots. But don't say, I've never had a snake, been around a snake, buying that cobra. Don't do that. That's dumb. So just don't do that. Um, number two that it's not a very good beginner animal would be berms and retics. You know, and, and for me, it's just because of the sheer 
size of what you're going to be dealing with. And if you don't have the experience of what you're getting into, you know, it's going to get to be intimidating. It's going to happen really quick. And a lot of people get those, go, oh, when it gets big, I'll just get rid of it. That is, don't. No, that is, that nothing pisses me off more than being, well, I'm going to get this animal, but I only plan on keeping it for X amount of time, and then somebody else will take it off my hands. That is bullshit. Don't do that. That's my, my caveat. So those would be my three. You can throw African rocks in there. You know, the, the giant snakes, anacondas, and the venomous snakes, I don't think make for your good first one. Unless you've got somebody with experience helping you that knows what the hell they're doing. What about you? What about some lizards, they'd say? What's um, some other snakes you think should be thrown in there? No, I, I think you pretty much covered that on snakes. Um, for lizards, you know, your big monitors... Like what, the Asian water monitors? Like an Asian, like, because there are localities of Asian water monitors that get 10 foot. I mean, that is two, a little under two of me. That's a that's a standard basketball goal height. Yeah. That is huge. That will wreck you. Absolutely. Yes. Even an accident, like, you know, we had Willie at the shop who is probably five and a half foot. So half the size of what a lo certain localities of those could be. And he would absolutely, even on <laughs> unintentionally, mess you up. I know someone who's been bit by him multiple times accidentally because he hand fed him, and he'd have to get stitches oh, or yeah. glue or something. Because he will, I mean, they'll take fingers, sever. Mm -hmm. um, Their teeth aren't little points. They're, they're little razor triangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. rough. So monitor lizards, um, you know, a species of snake I just kind of thought of, and it'll kind of tie into some lizard species, is there are some things that are just... I think not meant for captivity. Doesn't mean they can't. It can't be done. But I think for the general population, dragon snakes. They're yeah. species that we've been and, and we've been able to keep alive at most. The record that I know of right now is a friend of mine in Texas who's had it for 18 months. Yeah, I don't go buying dragon snakes. Don't go buying dragon snakes. They don't do well. There are people who've had success, and even captive bred. I, I, you know, I'm gonna say this ahead of time. I just don't think there'll be ever be a time where they are so well produced and in captivity that they will be a popular thing that anyone can just get. So dragon snakes and anything kind of in that line, there are some things that just, you know, they will, like red-eyed crocodile skinks, I think will eventually get there, but they're not one that can just, I sh you should just buy as your beginner. They're notoriously easily stressed just by looking at them, they'll die. Breathing on them, they'll die. Anything above 77 degrees, they'll die. You Anything know. below sixty degrees, they'll die. They, there's chameleons too. Chameleons, yeah. Uh, and they're more commonly captive bred. Chameleons are no. brutal. But the thing is, too, your first reptile. What do you always want to do with it? Hold it. You want to hold it, right? Yeah. You want to play with it. You do that with the chameleon. You're Crocodilians. Cro it goes out of there. You know, it th goes out of there. Another very commonly kept lizard, I think, is a horrible first pet. But it, it happens across the board. I think I know what you're going with. This. What do you think it is? A Nulls. No, I already said those because a little oh. bit of is bigger. Mm. Horribly, horrible first pet. I don't know. I can think of a lot of things. Iguanas. Oh, yeah. Iguanas. You know, if you've never seen an iguana, Tangies. fuck somebody up, man. Yeah. You get a big iguana, they, they can have a sassy attitude. Mm -hmm. They can whap the piss at you with that tail. But their bite is vicious. It's brutal. I mean, you can. I've seen stitches from that too. Yeah. Probably the same guy. Yeah. I think he got twelve or fourteen in there. He was gonna look like a patchwork quilt. Uh, yeah. So just iguanas are readily available. They're dirt cheap. They're they do not make a good first pet. No. They have a huge size requirement. They're gonna get big. They're probably not gonna like you very much. And even if they do like you, they're gonna have their moments. Sharp ass claws too. They don't yeah. have a little. You no, know, yeah. they just. It's just they're a terror. You know? It's a bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Not just for you, but you gotta think too. Say you get messed up real bad by an iguana. You're in the hospital. Who has to take care of that now? Yeah. And it, and you're laughing. No, it can happen. Iguanas yeah. have sent people to the hospital before. Yeah, you're in the hospital. Even monitor. Let's go or monitor lizard or something. You're in the hospital from said animal. Yeah. Who has to take care of that? Your family, who may or may not have experience, now they're in the hospital. Yeah. Or that animal gets taken to animal control. You think animal control knows what they're doing with a reptile? No. Especially something like an Asian water monitor or a croc monitor. Yeah, that thing is either getting put down yeah. or it's getting sent to a, uh adoption center where it's going to get adopted to the first person who has 100 bucks. And they're going to be in the hospital. They're going to be in the hospital or they're going to kill it because it's changed so many hands that it's stressed yeah. out. Yeah. And 
It's just bad. Be responsible. So in retrospect, to kind of wrap this up, we highly recommend for first reptiles. And again, it has to be an animal you care about. Don't be like, well, I really want to get a boa constrictor, but Matt said to get a ball python. So I guess we'll get the ball python, get it and hate it. You have to care about that animal. Otherwise, yeah. just do your research. Which is why you don't like the starter snake. Right. Right? Because you, you I have to care about it. I worked for Tails and Scales when I was in, in college, and there was a 13-year-old who had better care standards for tegus than most tegu owners I know. He had a 10-foot by 5-foot by 5-foot cage that he built by himself as a 13-year-old. No help from his parents. Found a ton, a literal metric ton of dirt to put in there. And he would cycle it out. Had the best care standards. And he did this all just by Googling. If you do your research, it can be done. That's not what we're saying. Yes. We're saying is these animals that we listed are good beginners or animals you can just take home with very little research and be successful. These are the ones you walk into a reptile show yeah. or a shop and you see and like you can make it work. Yep. They're they yeah. can they are good and not saying to impulse buy. Yeah. It's okay, but they are okay impulse buys or something that you'll go get be successful with. Yeah, but truth is if you wanted to burn for your first one and you did everything and you're right and you know what you're doing and you went and talked to a few people, could that be your first snake? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. So uh so but we highly recommend if you don't know what you're doing, you just want to go in and buy something. Leopards, crested bearded. Ball corns, fire. kings, balls. Yeah. Corns, kings, balls, leopards, crested bearded. Crane, you want to add? Okay, anything else? Nope. All right, guys, that's all we got. We're going to start the Patreon talking about the one exception where there absolutely should be a hard and fast rule about starters.